added characters from some of our guests. So these are, these are characters, of course there's Joan, and a character by Simon Roy, and Glenn Lovett, and uh, Sam Logan, and Gareth Godin, and um, oh, I'm gonna blank out on, on who is doing a, a Captain Canuck, I think it's um, Kamen and Drowski. Um, I might have got that wrong. And um, uh, Scott Chandler. And uh, also this character here by... Um, Don't worry about it. Alex Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and just so and everybody knows, this is, this is the pierogi cat, which is like the most famous, most fabulous cartoon character in, in, in Victoria. And no, he's not cat. humping that snowball. So he sure he isn't. He's no. Have you read Gareth's comic? <laughs> Hush you. I love it. This is a children's show. Arclight so, Dynamo says, this is Desert Bus's mandatory CanCon. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay, so what you get in this lot is you get a signed copy of, of the poster. You get the original artwork for the additional characters. Whoa. You wow. also get a it's, uh, set. That's fuzzy from Sam and Fuzzy. Uh, right? Yes, it is. it is. You also get a set of last year's students' comics. So there are 16 comic books. As one of the uh, the uh, the primary learning outcome that students have is at the end of the program, the eight-month program, they uh, write, illustrate, um, and publish a 24-page comic. And so these are. This is a complete set of our first-year students' comics. We have one more very special thing. Oops, I better not put that there. Um, this, uh, this will take a minute to explain. Um, last year, <sighs> give me a minute. Last year, we had um, one of our students was this wonderful, crazy lady named Lisa Jo, Lisa Jo Osland. And we actually got a call from her or at least I met her at the conference the year before. And she was the most explosively creative person I'd ever met. She was phenomenal. She had, she had had an amazing life. She had raised four kids in a house on stilts on Finslough, this weird place in the lower mainland. She had been um, a, a, a caterer and a, and a cook and just, I mean, and a nurse, and she had just done everything. And she told me this amazing story about how I was being interviewed on the CBC about the comics and graphic novels program at Camosa. And she, um, she said, that's for me. I want to draw comics. That's what I want to do. But you know, she lived up on Cortez Island, which is this, this magical island like way up on the, on the coast. And her mother had told her back in the day when she was young, she said, buy yourself a pair of gold earrings because someday if you're ever, you know, there's something you really want or you're in trouble or whatever, you can always sell your gold earrings. And that's what she did. She pawned her gold earrings to pay for a bus ticket because she didn't have a phone. And she came down to our conference and we met and I said, you are so in our program. You're just, you're exactly the kind of person we'd love to have here. And so she came down and she joined the program. And the first term was, was quite challenging because, like I say, she was outrageously creative and she would come in and she would do a comic that was like the size of the wall and then she'd do a comic that was a hundred panels long that would wrap all the way around the entire room and then she'd do like little teeny tiny comics and it was just and I finally said you know Lisa Joe you're like you're like black powder if there's a pile of black powder and you put a match to it it goes Foot! but if you wrap it all up tightly if you give it a context then it becomes explosive and I said if you can do comics and you can keep them within the context of a six panel grid, I think you'll be astounded. So this, the, the second term, that's exactly what she did. And this is her comic. And she did all these amazing stories which are just so wacky and off the wall. She did a beautiful, incredibly touching story, uh, an autobiographic story about when she was a girl and got on a plane and was sitting behind a young GI who was on his way to Vietnam who meets a girl and they just start talking about their future, which of course um, in all likelihood didn't happen. Uh, and then her last comic was what we call edutainment, which is comics in service of education, uh, instruction and advocacy. And she did this fabulous comic about making bread. Hello little nut French person. You want to make bread? Okay. And it's just like full of such crazy stuff like she's talking here about um, um, she's talking about proofing 
uh, uh, the dough, and she says, entertain the idea of proofing yeast as a pentose orgy. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's just, just amazing, amazing stuff. So, so she, um, when, when it was uh, time to graduate, I said, you know, I'm sorry, um, all I can say is we consider you a discovery. We would give you an A++ if we could, but we can only give you an A+. You're amazing. Go for it. And she was, went back to Cortez and was going to come back later in the summer. And, um, and she had a terrible cycling accident uh, that she did not survive. And so um, we found out about this at, um, late in the summer. Her wonderful kids, Ariel, Xavier, Elvis, and Will, uh, contacted us, gave us the news. They asked if Joan and I would come up and speak at her wake, which we did, which was one of the most um, moving uh, experiences we've ever had. In particular, the entire community on Cortez came together. There was food, there was song, there was music. Um, she was, like I say, so creative, she could make something out of nothing. And one of her friends honored her by um, playing a tune. He went down to the hardware store and bought a piece of, of PVC pipe and drilled holes in it. I made a flute, and he played this flute, and it was the most beautiful music, and it was so, it was so her. Um, and so the most moving moment came when a, um, a, a First Nations elder from the island um, ceremonially swept away the tears of her children with an eagle feather. And it was deeply moving. So we said, you know, we want to honor Lisa Joe's memory, and uh, we want to set up um, a scholarship in her name. And John and I will make the first contribution, and we suggested that we print up her comic book and, and sell that. And so they did that uh, at the wake and are continuing to do that. So there will be a, a scholarship in Lisa Joe's name uh, for a student uh, from now on in the Comics and Graphic Novels program. The, um, the criteria is the I think it's going to be something like the most explosively creative person with the craziest hair. <laughs> uh, and Joan and I get to choose that person. So anyway, uh, so um, one of Lisa Joe's comics will be part of this lot that that you are bidding. Yeah. Oof. Okay. Right. So um, what's our next live next, auction? I'm next turn, live I'm, auction. I'm, I'm going to turn the light back on. Uh, that'll be the Hulk cover sketch. Excuse me. The Hulk. The Hulk. The Hulk. The Hulk. Not a Hulk? The, not the, Hulk? The, the real Hulk? The real Hulk. This lot's going to be in all movies? caps, isn't it? Right. Yes, yeah, is it? I think so. Yeah. Oh, actually, they are back. So they can take it. 227. You got it. Oh. Except, I don't know why I did those numbers to you, because that was not 227. But I'll, it's 